Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video where we are going to be talking about how do you best manage multiple sunlight levels. Now I'm talking history, Bible, literature, as well as science levels, so you real content-based levels. I'm not talking like language arts or anything like that. These are the ones that you can potentially combine kiddos, but there's times when maybe you can't or maybe you're even foreseeing a future of a time when you cannot combine your kiddos anymore or maybe you're bringing some younger ones up and you'll potentially have two or more levels that you're running at the same time. And I know this can be anxiety inducing. This is the first year that we have been doing it at more of a significant level, bringing on my kindergartners and they have their own program and we're sticking to it as opposed to the kind of preschool programs. And so I have some things I've learned and I have some thoughts to share. So please grab some coffee or tea and join me as we just chat about this idea because I feel like it's a common concern, but it doesn't have to be overwhelming and it doesn't have to keep you from using a program that you really love. So stay tuned and we'll get into it all. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel if you're new or welcome back if you have been coming for a while. Like I said, we're gonna be talking about managing multiple sunlight levels. How has it been going for me this year? Since we are halfway through the school year, we're starting in on kind of the spring semester. So how has it been going for us? And what are my thoughts and some maybe tips and things that I have learned since really juggling two HBLs and two science programs this year? And so some context, I have a fourth grader and a third grader and they are using HBLC as well as Science C. And then I have twin kindergartners who are using HBLK and Science K. So I know this is kind of a daunting concept, or at least it has been for me over the last like couple years when I've been like, oh no, my twins are getting older. I am going to be bringing them into my homeschool soon. I really love sunlight. How can I do sunlight with a bigger age span now. Because at first I always had two kids that were 16 months apart. I knew they'd always kind of be together in those content-based subjects. But then I was like, how am I going to take these six-year-olds? Because a six-year-old and a 10-year-old, those are two different learning styles. They need different things. But it's really situation dependent, which I feel like actually is my first tip. My first tip is to give yourself grace because everybody's situation is different. And being just a part of the sunlight community for so many years, I have seen and read about how different families have structured this, how they have kind of solved the problem of different age groups of kids and how it has worked out for their family. So that's my first advice is to give yourself grace, to be able to figure it out, to be able to enter into managing two or more HBLs and sciences, kind of whatever you have decided, to give yourself grace on that, to try it, to allow yourself to fail or to be able to fix it, to reassess. But if it matters enough to you to try to manage two different levels, then I do have some tips that could potentially help you other than the fact that it looks different for everybody. And honestly, I'm going to be sharing the tips from what I've learned, which I just gave you the example of we're using C and K. But there are some families who threw out, like I think elementary and middle school, the kids do one science together. Like all the kids, no matter if they're seventh grade or kindergarten, everybody's doing the same science and it can be adjusted up or down for those kiddos. Now I decided not to do that one because I love science. I have a PhD in science. I really enjoy science. So I didn't want to miss out on that. And I feel like the more science, the better in my brain. And sometimes science is not as high a priority for maybe your family. So that is a good option of being able to combine just maybe science and then having separate HBLs. And then the same thing can hold true if you're your family that maybe has a bigger age spread, but you want to keep everybody together for history as well as science, and you are willing to adjust up and down. And I think that's wonderful. That could be because of budget and you only want to spend so much, and that's totally fine. Or it could even be just personality and just how you want to structure your homeschool and your family connections and things like that. So that's another very valid option that you don't have to run multiple levels, even though you have a big age spread. And you can even go the other way. I've heard of families that don't combine when they could combine. So they are doing those separate levels and maybe their kids are like fourth grade and third grade. And it comes down to their unique family. Maybe their kids don't do well learning together. Maybe one overshadows the other, or maybe there's some learning disabilities and it's just better for them to be separated. And so in that case, age isn't a factor and it's more like what each kid needs. 
Uh, so I guess that's a very long tip to really give yourself grace and assess your personal situation, not just see how sunlight says to do it, even though they don't say to do it a specific way. It is very flexible. Or even just being able to watch other people, like myself, for instance, this is how I choose to do it, but other people might take the same situation and combine everybody. I just know my personality and I don't like to adjust things up and down. That kind of causes me stress. I'd rather follow two separate things than adjust but that's me, you know what I mean? And so I think that's the first thing, is to be honest with yourself in kind of your situation and then just try some stuff out. But say you are going to run two separate levels or more, or more separate levels, or you're running two separate HBLs and just one science, whatever it is, there's some separation going on. Then I do have a few tips from what I have learned in this past semester as to how this has worked out for us and some of the snags we ran into and how I've worked through some of that. So my first tip, or I guess it's my second tip, for people who are gonna be managing two separate levels is to figure out if there's any subjects you can combine. So for instance, it's history, Bible, literature, and science. Those are the ones we're gonna be kind of focusing on as potential ones that you can run separately. There are things like Bible that's a common one to combine. And that's actually one thing we are doing this year. Sometimes I wanna give my kindergartners their own Bible because I don't think they understand the Bible from level C as well, but they are getting stuff. They're enjoying the memory verses. I know that I'll probably make it so that they have their own Bible come level B because I really like that book. And I feel like those were the ages my kids were really making some strides and kind of owning their own faith and things like that. So for now, we are combining Bible. I'm only running the Bible from level C. I'm not running the Bible from K. So that's an example of how I'm doing two separate programs, but I've chosen only one Bible. You could also do that for poetry very easily because this year I didn't feel like the poems from level K were super simple or too juvenile or anything like that. I thought they were really fun and my older kids enjoyed the level Ks, but then my twins, my kindergartners also enjoyed the level C poetry. We're actually reading both, but I feel like that's an area where you could combine or pick one or maybe one week you read C in one week you read K or something like that. So those are a couple examples of how you can maybe streamline it a bit if you're gonna run multiple programs. My next tip is to run a lot of the readings at the same time. To almost treat it like a morning time, I feel like that's helped me feel like it's not too much. I'm not like, oh, I have to go and do this set of readings with my twins. And then later in the day, we're gonna do more history with the big kids. I don't do it like that, not at all. And actually I do have on my channel a day in the life of us doing HBLK and Science K, so you can kind of see how we do some of this. But there's that snack time in our mid-morning kind of schedule where we do a lot of our sunlight readings. Now, I start with the younger kids because of just attention span. We're doing snacks and the snacks will run out eventually. And then my bigger kids will be there to kind of listen to their reading and the kindergartners can go off and play. But I do kind of have it all in one time frame, almost like a morning basket, I guess, but we're kind of mid-morning on our readings. And so that's one idea. Another is to kind of share the load. So what I mean by share the load is use audiobooks. You guys, use audiobooks. I know it is really fun to read out loud, or at least I think it's really fun. I really enjoy reading to my kids. But I also do use audiobooks as we're going to and from different places. Like there's one day every two weeks we do kind of a traveling homeschool and we're in the car a lot. And we use that time to listen to our read aloud. And we'll get through way more than that day's reading. Like we'll get through like multiple chapters. So like almost the whole weeks or a week and a half worth of reading if we listen to it on audio. And it's just, it's fun. It's fun for the kids to get a different way of listening to it. And then they can always go back and listen to the book again if they want to, which has happened in the past. So using audiobook is a good way to kind of get some of it off of your shoulders as well as eliciting the help of those around you. So spouse, uh, mother, people who are in your life that potentially would really enjoy reading out loud to the kids, that's usually the one that's easiest. It's, it's fine, you can totally hand like a grandma some history and they can follow the instructor's guide because it's sunlight and it's well written and the discussion questions are right there. So it's easy to hand to people, but I think what they might enjoy the most is some of the read alouds. And so that's just really fun to get some extra help with. So definitely utilize some of those outside helpers. The next tip I would say I have is to be open to off hours. 
So what I mean is like, I think we all kind of envision school happening during school time, especially if we grew up in public school, which I did, is the idea of like, well, you can't use a Saturday to do homeschool or you can't use an evening to do homeschool. And it's like, but you can. You can if it works for your family, if it helps you take what you need to do and kind of spread it out over more days, over more periods of time, then definitely do that. It really helps. Like we have moved our science experiments to Saturdays and it's been going really well. We've done a ton of science experiments because prior to this year, I had always left it kind of to our afternoon but I'm always tired, the kids are tired, we wanna be done, and it just wouldn't always happen, but if it happens Saturday mornings, and we call it Science Saturday, somehow it, it works much better. So that's an awesome way to utilize some of those off hours, and so then I'm not even worried about a block of time during our Monday through Friday to get science experiments done. So again, that lightens that kind of load a bit. And then another tip I would have, and I'm not sure if this actually helps managing two programs or not, but I would say it's helped me kind of with the idea of overwhelm, like feeling like, oh, there's too much to do, is to think in terms of weeks as opposed to days. Like I will plan out kind of when I want things done. Like I'll look at our grid for that week and I'll figure out where I can fit things. And if say, for instance, we get off for some reason or my kids want me to read more read aloud, we can adjust and we can be flexible. As long as I'm getting what I want to get done, in that week, it doesn't matter if it happens on Monday when it is kind of listed in the grid form. It doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be Monday. And I hope that makes sense. The other thing I would say kind of to tag off of that adjusting your instructor guide, or at least in your head adjusting it, is you can actually adjust it. Is there can be some assignments that you're like, no, I don't think we're gonna do that this week. Or I don't think my kids have an interest in this or they haven't been paying attention really well on this. So maybe we'll just do half of the window on the world kind of assignments or whatever it is like you can take what is in front of you and you can decide how much of it you want to use and i think that's really helpful too so those are kind of a combo tip there and then my last and final tip is really just to be willing to reassess and change things if needed like if you start to feel overwhelmed or if you hit a season of life like there's family emergencies there's health problems there's in-law problems whatever it is like there's something that has come up that makes the current juggling of two programs too much, then be willing to assess, be willing to say, okay, well, maybe we'll stretch this program over a year and a half, or maybe we're gonna drop these read alouds and we'll read them in the summer, or kind of whatever that is. And honestly though, I think in the terms of kind of this tip of being able to reassess, I would also say pray about it. Like give it to God, take those thoughts of overwhelm and just how you're feeling kind of heavy by choosing to run two different levels of history or science and like pray about it and see what God puts on your heart. See if he can help you problem solve it because sometimes it's amazing how an idea will pop in my head. How if I just release this need to like control it and make it all work, it just starts working. You know what I mean? And so that's kind of where I want to end my tips because it's probably the best tip, honestly. And so, so that's what I've learned over this past semester. So I'm sure I will learn more as time goes on, but I feel like sometimes I learn the most right at the moment of change, which has been this semester for us. And so it's been really good. And I currently wouldn't trade it. I still really like running both of those programs, but I'll hold it loosely if we need to change things in the future. And like I said, my way isn't always the best way or it definitely might not work for you and your family. So giving yourself just the grace to figure out what works for you in terms of this question of can I balance and juggle multiple content-based programs. And so I hope this has been helpful. I hope my ramblings and chattiness for you guys has given you some ideas. If so, let me know down below and also let me know some other tips because I know there's some of you watching who have more experience with this than I do. So I would love to hear some advice from you all. But otherwise, you guys, I hope you are doing well. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you want to, and I will see you in the next homeschool video. All right, guys, take care.